If you've got some leftover bananas, don't you dare throw them away. I've got the perfect recipe. We're gonna be making homemade banana bread. It is so incredible, and I promise your breakfasts are gonna get that much more delicious. My morning bliss is a hot cup of black coffee and some warmed up homemade banana bread. Oh my, God. there's, dude, there is nothing better than that. It is so good. And believe it or not, this recipe is incredibly easy to make. I promise you can do it. First, we need to knock out a little bit of prep with that batter. Sound good? Let's bake. We are gonna start off by peeling up some ripe bananas. They may not look ripe to you, but they are definitely ripe to me. I'll explain in a few seconds. Just simply snap off the end, peel it. Obviously, I would hope at this point that you've peeled a banana in your life. We're gonna peel up eight of them. They're about medium size. And then in a bowl, go ahead and grab a masher. If you have a potato masher, that's perfect. What we're gonna do is smash these down completely until it's smooth with a few chunks in there. If you don't have that, you can absolutely use a large fork or even hand beaters will work just fine. So a really easy trick when it comes to sort of ripening bananas a little bit quicker, when they're on the bunch, they're drawing a ton of moisture, making them sort of last a little bit longer. Well, to speed up that ripening process, just take one, two, three, remove them all from the bunch and keep them separate. They'll ripen up super quick. Now, when it comes to ripe, that's going to be different for each person. Me, I like yellow with some brown spotting on there. Some people like them all brown. My wife likes them a little more green, unripened, but the browner they are, the riper they are. That means the more flavor they have, making your bread being that much more delicious. So here's what we need to do now. We're gonna set the mashed bananas to the side and then in a very large bowl, we're gonna add in some melted unsalted butter followed up with some sugar for some sweetness and just to stop and say yes i'm doing this in a bowl and not a stand mixer this time and you're welcome now what we want to do is completely mix this together please 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 follow these strict procedures to make sure your bread gets nice lift it's fluffy it's airy and it's delicious now what we want to do is add in one or two eggs at a time and then completely mix them in until they are combined again follow these processes and procedures to make sure that our bread is delicious. I know sometimes they seem annoying and counterintuitive, but I promise it will be worth it. Now what we're going to do is add in a little bit of vanilla extract, followed up with some vegetable oil. This is going to add a little bit more fat and flavor. And then the next thing we want to add in is a bit of whole milk and mix this in completely. Now what you can do is just use milk or just use oil. I use a combination or if you don't want to use any of those, try some full fat yogurt. And now I'm going to add in some baking soda. Next, followed up with adding in some baking powder. And then I'm going to add in just a little bit of ground cinnamon. It is really going to help take this banana bread over the top in the flavor department. So I want to stop and say this. The reason I added in the baking powder with the wet ingredients is because it will incorporate more evenly. Oftentimes recipes call for mix all the dry ingredients together and then pour it in the wet. Well, what happens? It becomes hard to mix, but then again, you don't want to over mix it. It's like a total conundrum. So my suggestion is mix it with the wet. It will be that much better. Plus you'll get a ton of lift on that bread. It'll be light, fluffy, delicious. Just do it. I don't know what else to tell you. Now what we're gonna do is, once everything is mixed together at this stage, we are gonna grab that big old bowl of mashed bananas and we're gonna put it right in there with everything else and then again, grab that whisk, begin to whisk everything in until it becomes smooth. And then what we wanna do is hit it with a little bit of flour. I'm using all purpose. If you use bread flour, you do need to increase the amount of hydration by about five to 7%. Now go ahead and mix everything until it is just combined. And I know that when the, all the flour is completely mixed in, this looks absolutely excellent. I'm just going to add in a pinch of sea salt. You know me, got to season it to perfection. That's just the way it goes. And it will really add to the flavor department here. And now what I'm going to do is add in some roughly chopped or crushed walnuts. You could use pecans too if you'd like. Grab yourself a rubber spatula and completely mix everything together, folding it gently until it is incorporated. Now go ahead and grab two nine by five loaf pans. This will work excellently. And using a little bit of nonstick spray or some butter, you can grease up each of these pans. Now at this point, what you wanna do is evenly divide the batter between both loaf pans and using the backside of your spatula, flatten it out a little bit on top. 
Now, you know me, I can't help myself. I always make way too much, but I promise this bread freezes perfectly. And if you want to just half this recipe, literally just cut it in half, it will cook perfectly. And for me, I wanna take this over to the top with a little bit of extra sort of crumb topping. Here's how you make it. So in a small bowl, I've got a little bit of leftover crushed walnuts. Again, you could use pecans and then add in some light brown sugar. All you really wanna do is mix this together. It's like a streusel minus the butter. Just gonna add a little bit more flavor to the top of this banana bread. So using a spoon, go ahead and generously sprinkle it on all over the top, completely covering it. Once it is to this step, we are heading right over to the oven. We're going to bake it on the lower third of the oven, or if you can only bake it in the middle, that's totally fine too. And it's going to take in between 85 and 90 minutes on 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Oftentimes cook times don't work. That's why I've always resulted to internal temperature. You will know when this bread is done when it reaches either 197 or 198 degrees Fahrenheit internally. We're going to pull it out. It's going to carry over cook, right? It just doesn't stop cooking the second you pull it out of the oven. It's going to come down a little bit in temperature. Well, first it's going to spike up. Then it's going to come down in temperature. It's going to cool. It's going to be perfectly cooked. I promise this is a foolproof way to do it. Get yourself a really good thermometer. And now I want to take this recipe again over the top with a little bit of honey butter. Here's how you do it. Go ahead and grab some softened unsalted butter and put it in a small bowl. We're next going to add on a little bit of honey. And here's a trick. When honey is really slow to pour, just put it in the microwave for like 10 to 15 seconds. It'll pour with ease. Go ahead and grab a whisk and mix all this together. I'm just going to sprinkle in a little bit of sea salt. A nice sweet and salty combination can be delicious. We're going to pop it in the fridge till we need it. After you've hung out for a little bit, go ahead and grab your bread and pull it out. And goodness, does this look amazing. What we want to do at this point is just transfer it over to a rack and let it cool for about 15 to 20 minutes. And Comey's, there are so many awesome tips and techniques in here, like mixing your baking powder with your wet ingredients, the crumb topping, the amazing honey butter. You start putting these into your everyday cooking, I promise you, everything will be so much better. Like I always say, homemade food from scratch is always better. Better than anything pre-made at the grocery store better than the restaurants. There's no reason to ever go out again, although you should and support your local restaurants. But it's just, you're, I don't know what else to say. You're gonna be an awesome home cook. Just practice these things. Incorporate it daily into what you're doing. The prep, the grocery shopping, the final product. You're gonna love how good this tastes. Now it's time, of course, to plate up in slow-mo. I mean, there's not much else to do but take tons of thick slices out of this banana bread. And I'm going to show you this final one here as I give it a little turn. You can see that everything is literally cooked so perfectly. I'm telling you, use your temperatures. It will never fail. I'm going to finish by brushing on or spreading on a little bit of honey butter. And my, oh my, check out these beauties. This is just so good. Your breakfasts are definitely going to that next level. And of course... You know what you could do is batter these up, cook them in a little butter, boom, banana French toast. So good. Be sure to like and share this video, subscribe to my channel. You should also check out this video. I made it just for you. I'll see you on there.